Number 42. A 76 kilogram person is being pulled away from a burning building as shown in figure 4.40. Calculate the tension in the two ropes if the person is momentarily motionless. Include a free body diagram in your solution. All right. So first, just uh, take a look at this picture on the right hand side. So I have to take this picture and create a free body diagram out of that. So in order to do so, right, we first create an axis or a set of axes, I should say, a Y and an X. And the next thing we have to ask ourselves is where is the center or what is the center, uh, let's just say, of this problem going to be? All right. And I would say we'll choose this particular point right here as the center. All right. That's where all the vectors will be uh, emanating from. So let's now uh, turn our attention to our free body diagram over here. So we have uh, this person being uh, essentially pulled away from a burning building, right? And it looks like she's just hanging there and she's temporarily motionless. So her weight is just going to be pulling straight down, right? So there's a force of her weight. So we'll say <clears throat> uh, W, uh, weight of the woman, all right? And then there are these two forces now, these two tensional forces, <coughs> one pointing uh, to the right-handed direction at an angle of 10 degrees, and then the other pointing slightly in the left-handed direction at an angle of what? Well, it's 15 degrees at the top, right? But remember, that would be the same thing as 15 degrees here, alternate interior angles, okay? So that's great. So now we have our picture, okay? So what does it mean that she's mo motionless, all right? What is that? What's the significance of that? Well, that means that any of the formulas I use, meaning some of the x, right, some of the force in the x direction is equal to ma, or some of the forces in the y direction is equal to may, right? There's no acceleration, so this whole thing goes to zero. So that means that the sum of both forces, both in the x and both in the y, equals zero. Okay, that's an important fact. Now, what I'd like to do is, in order for me to find the tensional forces here, right, the t and the t, probably what's a good idea is to break this problem up into their components, right? Because we know the sum, meaning the resultant uh, forces in both directions should be zero because there's no acceleration, she's motionless. So why don't we uh, first just construct a simple component table? All right, table. We have the X components, then we have the Y components, and we have three vectors here, right? I'll call this, um, here's T1. And then this vector here will be uh, T2, right? T2. And then we have the weight, right, of the woman. So we have then the weight of the woman. All right, and when we sum all of those together, remember that we just found that their sums equal the resultant uh, vector, but they're all going to be zero because there are no, there is no acceleration in the problem. So let's simply uh, find the pieces of each. So first, let's look at uh, the uh, components of T1. So T1 would have an X component here, right? This would be T1, T1 X. And then it also has a Y component to it, correct? And that would just be straight up. And that would be uh, T1 Y. Now remember, the X1 is negative, so that would be negative. All right. Now, uh, how, sorry, just thinking, how shall we now create an equation um, that involves TIX and TIY? Well, from the triangle I created, right, we would need to know this angle in here. And we, we can easily find that, right? Uh, we know this angle, 15 degrees, and we know that it forms a right angle there. Uh, so therefore, right, the remainder here would be uh, 75. So that's 75 degrees, okay? So to create a uh, an equation that details the Tix, all we would need to do is this. So we would be using cosine, right? So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 75 would be equal to negative T1x all over uh, T1, okay? So negative T1x would equal T1 cosine of 75. Now just bring the negative sign on over, okay? So I'm just going to erase that over here, and we just bring it on over there. All right, so plug that into your component table. So for T1, I really didn't leave myself much room here, huh? That's okay. I'm just going to do a little magic, hopefully. 
Oh, I didn't get the I didn't get the plus sign in it. There we go. So I'm just going to move this over here, and now I should have enough room. So here now, T1, it's negative, right? T1 cosine, cosine of 75. Okay, how about now for T1y? Well, we would be using sine in that case, right? So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 75 will equal T1y all over T1. Okay, great. So now we have T1y is equal to T1 sine of 75. Okay, so let's take that and plug it into our y component now. So this is, and it's positive because it's pointing up. So T1 sine of 75. Great. Let's do the same thing now for T2. So the components here for T2, right? This one is going to be T2 in the x direction, and then we have T2 in the y direction right there. All right, so this is T2 in the y direction. So same thing, guys. Uh, cosine for the x here, cosine theta, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine now of 10 degrees will equal uh, T2x all over T2. And just solving for T2x, because that's the x component, that's what I can plug into the table, uh, will, now be cos uh, will now be equal to uh, T2 cosine of 10. Okay, so let's plug that in, and it's positive, right? Because it's pointing in the positive x direction. Same thing now with the T2y, right? So T2y, uh, T2y, hold on one second. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to use sine here. I don't know why. A little bit of a brain freeze. Opposite over hypotenuse, so the sine of 10 will be equal to T2y all over 10. So now here we have T2y equal 10 times the sine of 10 degrees. Great, and we'll plug that into our table. So this is 10, 10. Where did I get 10 from, guy? I, I have no idea where I got that from. I'm sorry. Oh boy. Hopefully I'm not confusing you more than I'm helping. <laughs> All right, so uh, this should be, uh, sorry. That's where the mistake was. The mistake was so silly right here. This is just T2. Sorry about that. And we have T2 in here. Okay, so now let's fix that. So this is just T2 sine of 10. Okay, wonderful. And now we have the weight of the woman. Now she has no, there is no X component to that weight, so I plug in zero for that. And the weight of the woman, uh, they told her, they told us she's 76 kilograms. So then we take the 76, multiply it by 9.80, right, to find the weight. I'm just following the formula over here on the right-hand side, that the weight is equal to the mass multiplied by the uh, gravitational acceleration. So 76 times 9.8, 145. Oh, so... <laughs> I'm really dying today with this pro I don't know what's going on. 745. Oh man. And that's in Newtons. All right, it's pointing straight down there for it's negative. Okay, so I'm going to plug that into the table negative 745. So now I have right two equations here. Okay? I'm going to sum all of this to equal 0 and then sum all of this and that equals 0. All right, let's see what we got. So uh, where should I write it? Let me write it, I'll write it down here on the lower right-hand side. So we have T2 cosine of 10 minus T1 cosine, oops, cosine of 75. That should equal zero, right? I can bring this term on over to the left-hand side. That might be helpful. So now then I'd have T2 cosine of 10 equals T1 cosine of 75. Okay, we'll just hold off now. Well, that's a nice equation. Now we can do the same thing for the second case, right? So I have T1 uh, sine of 75 plus T2 sine of 10 minus 745 is all equal to zero. All right, so we got two equations. Guys, how many unknowns do we have? We have two, right? We don't know T2 and we don't know T1. And we have two unknowns and two equations. So how do we solve that? That's a system of equations problem, right? Solve one of them. 
solve, let's say, this equation for, I don't know, t1, and then plug in the resulting value into t1 in the second equation. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let's solve this guy for t1. What that would look, I'm going to go to the upper left-hand corner. That would look like this. That would look like t2 cosine of 10 all over cosine of 75, right? That's equal to t1. Now, take this value and plug it in for t1 in your second equation, okay? So watch what we're going to do. I'm going to rewrite the second equation on top. So the second equation was t1 sine of 75, right, plus t2 sine of 10 minus 745 is equal to 0. So now just take this and plug it in for t1, okay? So all we have to do is actually, you know what I'm going to do just to save a little space? I'm just going to erase that now and just plug it in right away, okay? Shouldn't be too confusing. So we got, I'm just gonna need more room. So we got here T2 cosine, cosine of 10 all over cos of 75. Okay, so let's start cleaning this up. I'm gonna combine the cosine 10, 75, and sine of 75, right, just by multiplying. So cosine, cosine of 10 times sine of 75 divided by cosine of 75. So that all works out to be 3.67. So we got, we got 3.67 T2 plus, find the number for sine of 10 now. Sine of 10 is 0 0.174. So 0 0.174 T2 minus then the 470, uh, excuse me, minus the 745. But why don't we just add that on over right away now? Just so we can save a step. So that will be equal to now positive 745. Combine your like terms here. Okay, so take the 3.67, add it to the 0.174. 3.84, so now we got 3.84 T2 is equal to 745. And then just divide out now the 384. Divide out the 384. And the T2 value now is 745 over 3.84. 194 newtons. So this is 194 newtons. That is T2. So we found one of them. Now what do we have to do? We just got to find T1, right? Because we have to find both of them. So that's easy though. Take this value now and plug it back in to this equation because you already have that thing solved for T1, right? So now it becomes 194 times cosine of 10 all over cosine of 75. And that was equal to T1. So let's calculate it. I'm going to write it right here. T1 is equal to 194 times cosine of 10 divided by cosine of 75. 738. 738 newtons. Oh my goodness, thank goodness, right? Now this should kind of make sense. Even if you just look at the look at the diagram, look at T1, right? And, and T1's vector component is, is aligned better. It, it has more Y component to it. So it should, this T1 should be handling more of the weight than this T2 should be because that has more X component to it. So answers sound reasonable. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and I look forward to helping you out in the next question.